Hi, I'm your host, Roman Raves. Welcome back to Fight Eval on Sports Talk Radio MMA. This week we have UFC 244, a pay-per-view event taking place at Madison Square Garden in New York City. It's Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz. Jorge Masvidal, his record is 34 and 13. 34 wins and 13 losses. Hailing from Miami, Florida, USA. 34 years of age. Standing at 5 foot 11 inches, weighing 170 pounds fighting out of the american top team association jorge masvidal is by far the more experienced fighter in this matchup having almost 20 more bouts than nate diaz in his professional mma career he also has a bare knuckle street fight and boxing career that i would also consider to be highly advantageous to him winning any bout with his last performance breaking ufc records for the fastest knockout in ufc history against ben Askren, and him getting the win the fight before that by ko victory versus darren till my Masvidal seems to be a man on a mission, finally getting the recognition and extensive MMA career like his deserves. The same can be said for his opponent. After a three-year hiatus, he came back with a stellar performance versus Anthony Showtime Pettis. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. And restored that loving feeling with his adoring fans. Gamebred's challenger for the BMF in the game title match is none other than senior badass himself, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz, his record is 20 and 11, 20 wins and 11 losses. Hailing from Stockton, California, USA, 34 years of age, standing at 6 feet tall, weighing 170 pounds, fighting out of Caesar Gracie Fight Team Association. Best known for his don't give a f attitude, Nate Diaz is no stranger to war in that octagon. Most recently with Showtime Pettis and the legendary rivalry he had between him and the former champ, the notorious Conor McGregor. Needless to say, these are some bad hombres. We have some bad hombres here. Even Combate America fans are gonna love to see this one as two of the most famous Latino fighters in the world coming from Cuban and Mexican descent will be entering that octagon for the first ever official bad this mother in the game title match. Nate Diaz poses a real threat to game bread. He never gives up. His resilient fighting style and incredible stamina will definitely be a problem. Not to mention he has excellent jujitsu and is always looking for the submission. Comparing the two, Nate Diaz is a southpaw and Jorge Masvidal is an orthodox fighter. Sometimes that could be trouble. Sometimes the southpaw gets that edge, but you know, it's fairly debatable depending who you ask. And Nate Diaz has a two inch reach, which he does look a lot taller than Jorge Masvidal. That could play a factor in this fight matchup. They're both the same age at 34 years old. Jorge Masvidal actually turns 35 this month, basically a week after the uh, fight. That's basically evenly matched up as well. Where Jorge Masvidal exceeds Nate Diaz's skill set is in his takedown defense. His takedown defense percentage is 77% while Nate Diaz is only 42. Surprisingly, he also has a higher takedown accuracy at 58% while Nate Diaz is 31%. But regardless, I don't think he wants to go on the ground with Nate Diaz, being that Nate Diaz is pretty much a submission artist. Even though he loves to stand and bang, if he gets you on the ground, you're in for a quick trip back to the locker room. Loser! If you plan on betting for this matchup, as of today, they have Jorge Masvidal for minus 120 and Nate Diaz for minus 110 at the money line. The overall consensus is Jorge Masvidal minus 110 70 and Nate Diaz plus 140. Although I love both of these fighters, somebody has to win. And I think that would be Jorge Masvidal, the game bred fighter. I believe his technical skill set is going to etch out over Nate Diaz. This fight is really going to be a fighter's fight to watch. If you love MMA, this fight is for you. You know, I can't help but mention last week's matchup with Damian Maya versus Ben Askren. Truly, Damian Maya is the epitome of the MMA. I knew it prior to the start of the match that Damian Maya was going to be heavy in his striking. Although he's known for his jiu-jitsu and grappling and taking guys down and submitting them, he always breaks them down first with his striking. It was an incredible display between Damian Maya and Ben Askren and the exchanges they were having on and off the ground. They changed positions almost effortlessly. It was almost like I heard Bruce Lee say something like a good fight is almost like a well orchestrated dance. A good fight should be like a small play but played seriously. 
You know, it almost seems effortlessly. It almost seemed like you planned it. And that's how that fight looked. It was a great performance of MMA. It really was mixed martial arts. Who would have thought that these guys would be standing and banging for so long? I knew Damian Maia was going to use his striking, but I didn't know they were going to be in an all-out slugfest. And then when they got on the ground, it was even more incredible because of the way they were, you know, going from one position to the next, countering, trying to get submissions, breaking out of submissions, transferring roles. It was so great. And then it, it didn't look like uh, people were overusing their skill sets. Like, you know, sometimes guys get on the ground and they try and they try to get you, but they can't and they waste a lot of energy and then they finally get back up. It wasn't like that with these two guys. It was like they got in, they tried to do what they wanted to do. And if it didn't work, they got out and got right back on their feet and tried something new and came about it a different way. And that was for both of these fighters. So I kind of give a hats off to both of them, Damian Maia and Ben Askren. They really put on an excellent performance. You know, a lot of guys probably don't like Ben Askren, especially after the losses he took and all, you know, all the trash talking he does. But to me, I think this is a valuable learning lesson for Ben Askren. The first fight he fought was Robbie Lawler. Brutal guy. Great striker. Gave Askren a run for his money. Almost took Askren out and Ben Askren managed to prevail. Then he fought Jorge Masvidal, which is the headliner for this matchup. And he turned around and took an awful loss with that knee to the head that put him out. And then finally, he just lost to a fellow grappler, one of the greatest in the game, if not the greatest in the game, Damian Meyer. So this is a lot of experience. He's fought three of the best guys in the UFC. And this is a whole lot of experience for Ben Askren. If he could turn around and take these losses and turn around and add a good striking game, or at least some type of better striking game to his wrestling, he might be able to become a better fighter than he has ever been in the UFC or probably in his whole professional MMA career. Because let's face it, he came from a different promotions and he was one of the kings over there. He was unbeaten. He came to the UFC with some of the best fighters in the world and you see how the wins and losses are occurring now. So it happens to everybody. People take losses. People take wins. It's the way you bounce back and use what you've been through to go ahead and propel yourself to the next level. Him being a champion in one promotions and coming here, hopefully he's able to use these experiences he's had and help some get back in the game and in the runnings. Because whether we like it or not, Ben Askren is a big name in the UFC right now. If he could get back on his win streak horse, might be able to make a name for himself. Now, thing I definitely got to note is Damian Maya turned around at the end of his matchup with Ben Askren after giving kudos to Ben Askren and, you know, thanking everybody he had to thank. He turned around and said he's very excited for the BMF title match between Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz. He said hopefully one day they could do a title match similar to that for grapplers. And I thought that was a great idea because, you know, sometimes these great fighters just don't get a chance to become champion. Like, you you know, they just don't make it to become the champion, but they are the greatest at what they do, whether it's striking or grappling. That's the main things in this sport, other than maybe an entertainment belt, <laughs> who's the best entertainer. But uh, so I think that was a great thing. Maybe they should have a grappler. And, and you know, some people might say, what do these different belts do for the game? Some people believe it takes away from the game. I don't. I think it actually adds value to the game. You know, it's, you think about it, maybe some people might relate it to like professional wrestling where they have different belts for this and that. And I, I just think that, you know, obviously when you're the best grappler in the game, you want somebody to know it. And what better way to present a title to that person? Like he's the best grappler in the game. We don't, we're not just saying it. He won a belt for that. He's the best grappler. And this guy, is the best striker in the game you know we're not just saying he's the best striker we're not just saying it because he won in such such a way or you know we think he is or the percentages say it he won the belt for that you know so I think that's an incredible subcategories for the game and then as well I think that'll make people fight more like if you become the best grappler then why not try to go for the best striker belt too or maybe even try to go for hey maybe I could I could be the champion like I get the championship belt the official championship belt you know I think that'll give the fighters more of a desire to do better and maybe it's a pick me up like you know maybe you got a couple of losses here and there or wins whatever the case may be and finally gets that belt and gets appreciated for you know being the best grappler being the best striker and then turns around and turns his career around or even turns it up a notch and goes after that belt it's a very interesting notion and I think for the fans I mean why not why not give kudos to the fighters I think it's a great thing for the fans as well like I like to see that you know they 
just invented something new. So we don't have to just watch the guys trying to go for the championship belt. We could watch these guys go for the BMF title belt. Or we could go ahead and watch these guys for the uh, best grappler belt. You know, BMF basically means best striker, all around baddest mother effer in the game. For us guys that like to watch two guys brawling, it's a striker belt for us. So I think I think that was for us, the fans. And I appreciate them for doing that. As far as the BMF title is concerned, you know, after this matchup, the BF title is here. It's finally here. Jorge Masvidal, Nate Diaz, as well as Dana White and the whole UFC made it happen. So it's here. I don't think it should go anywhere because we got some bad MFers inside the lightweight division. Right after this one, definitely up next for that title shot, whether he wins the championship belt or not, I believe Tony Ferguson should go ahead and fight for that BMF title match. He's definitely a bad mother. Definitely. And not trailing too far behind is Dustin Poirier. When he gets in there on his striking stuff, hitting you with those combinations, that's a bad boy. So I definitely think he should probably be up next. You know, uh, maybe Donald Cerrone will want to put his name in that hat later on. But I think the UFC is going to do, because I've seen them talking about a possible Conor McGregor versus either Donald Cowboy Cerrone or Justin Gaethje. Me personally, if I was part of Conor McGregor's team, I wouldn't match him up with Justin Gaethje right now, especially with with the tear that Justin Gaethje's been on and the type of fighter Gaethje is, I would definitely try to have Conor McGregor come back and steer clear from Justin Gaethje right now. I think his best bet would be to try to fight Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And the fans would probably love that fight anyway. You know, a lot of fans would want to see Cowboy Cerrone probably beat up Conor McGregor because there's a lot of uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone fans as well as there's definitely a lot of Conor McGregor fans and they definitely want to see him come back and beat whoever he goes ahead and fights. So I think that'd be the best matchup for Conor McGregor coming back. Speaking of Justin Gaethje, whether he gets a title match in the near future or not, he should also be up for a BMF title match as well because he's a bad man in that ring. We already know that. So I think these different belts could help both the fighters and the fans. Before I go, I definitely got to go ahead and speak on the style bender. I did not think that the style bender was going to be able to beat Robert the Reaper Whitaker. And he blew my mind mind when he beat him I, I really didn't think he was going to do it I didn't think he was to be honest with you I didn't think he was going to win his last three fights I didn't think he was going to beat Anderson Silva he did I didn't think he was going to beat Kelvin Gaslam he did and I definitely didn't think he was going to beat Robert Whittaker and he did I, I was a loyal fan of Robert Whittaker I'm still a fan of Robert Whittaker I was a loyal fan as far as believing that he was going to stay the champion and I didn't think anybody was going to dethrone him the style bender I got to give hats off to him I I definitely said him if you caught my last podcast you definitely heard me say I don't think he's going to be able to do it but if he does it I definitely got to go ahead and speak on it so I'm speaking about it now I didn't think he was going to do it and he did it he surely proved me wrong and I'm definitely man enough to say that he's made me a fan because you know as much as I was trying to hold out on being a fan of the style bender Israel Adesanya I have to be a fan now like it's no way like he's done it he's undefeated what is there more to say he's an undefeated fighter He's done kickboxing, boxing, you name it. He's come to the UFC, ran through everybody he's fought against. He staked his claim as a champion. And now that he's champion, guys, I, if whoever was not believing him, I'm telling you, I, w- I wasn't believing he was going to do it either. But I believe now, I'm definitely a believer. I believe Stylebender is probably going to be the champion for a while. I don't know who's going to be able to take Stylebender out. He's just that good. His movements, he's so quick. What else can you say? He's a beast in there. To see him lose ever in in the near future, man, somebody's going to have a lucky night if they do that because I don't see it happening. So hats off to you, Style Bender. I hope you enjoy your championship and go ahead and get many, many more wins. And I will never doubt you again, definitely. So um, as far as everything else goes, hope you had a good time listening. Go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me see who you think is going to win. I would, I would like to know. You already know who I think is going to win. I got Jorge Masvidal, the grain bread fighter for this one. A lot of people on the uh, betting thing has has Jorge Masvidal winning too. So um, I, I'd put my money on Jorge Masvidal if I was you. Until next time, this has been another episode with me, your host, Roman Raves, on Sports Talk Radio MMA for this week's Fight Eval, UFC 244. Jorge Masvidal versus Nate Diaz. For your next matchup breakdown, you don't have to wait because it's starting right now.